I, I get desperate to see others because I think that we're relational people. We are meant to have a relationship with each other and see each other. But that same need is there for us for God. God seeks that from us. He misses us when we're not with him and we're not seeking him and we don't want to be around him. That's what he wants is for us to be with him in his presence. It's me, Kevin. What's up, all you not Kevins? I have made it. I have arrived. It's been like a long flight. You're not going to believe where I am. Here we go. I am in Israel. Here I am. I'm like, I even dressed for the occasion. Everyone's looking at me. I funny. I feel like I'm the only person actually wearing these type of clothes, but I wanted to look like an Israelite because this is so cool. Look, it's kind of like Arizona it's really hot out here but you can see I'm a I'm in the temple courts right now and uh, we've got the the most uh, the holy and the most holy place there's a tabernacle here because we we put that up because the temple wall has been torn down that's that's a later story but I, I, I thought Israel is the best place to teach you from today because it, it was all about Israel. It was uh, Israel represents uh, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the meeting place where God was going to be with his people and intends to be with his people forever and ever and all eternity. But remember how we started this? We were back in uh, way back in the Bible and we learned about a guy named Abram who was changed to Abraham and God blessed him, gave him a son at a really, really old age. They had their son and God required on the altar for it to be a sacrifice to him. And of course, God replaced his son with something else. Um, God was saying, I'm going to provide the sacrifice that is needed because of the brokenness that was caused from the sinfulness of man so God was so cool that way but remember how he talked to Abraham and said uh, your generations and generations and generations will be mine and belong to me well let's go down a little bit let's get to Moses is a descendant from Abraham and Moses is going to be found and located in Egypt which is not Israel and they are stuck as prisoners as slaves inside of Egypt and uh, God's people who don't really know their God their Lord yet are crying out to a God they don't know and asking for help can you get us out of here can you free us as slaves as prisoners and take us to a place Will you meet us in a place where we can be with you and know you and have you and worship you? God hears that prayer. It's like, yep, I'm going to do that. And they head out of Egypt and they go into a desert and they struggle in their faith and they struggle in their journey and they don't quite get it whatsoever. And it's not going to be them that's going to get to be at the meeting place with God. It's going to be their next generation. But he's going to use Moses. And here's the really, really important thing. God isn't going to just say, I'm going to meet you in Israel. I'm going to go and uh, one day when you actually follow me and you get to Israel, that's where I'll meet you. God is going to actually go along with them on their journey. While they're still sinners, God's going to be with them. But he can't just be with them like like this because God's holy and God's people at that time were sinners and away from God. So he had to create almost like this barrier between them and him, um, but still be with them and be amongst them. So the first place after the altar was going to be a tent, a, a temporary tent that could travel along with them. But inside that tent contained uh, a container, which is bigger than the box that's in here, that was called an ark. And the Spirit of God was in the ark. They had to run these long poles through and only certain people could carry the ark, but it contained the Spirit of God that was going to be with them as they traveled. And as long as God was with them, nothing could harm them or hurt them. He could bless them and be with them. That ark gets stolen later and then it gets returned. It's a whole mess. But he meets with Moses in a tent. And in that tent, he gives them instructions to, to build something more where he can dwell among them. And that's going to be called the tabernacle. And if I go into uh, this scripture, which I made larger so I can read, is in Exodus 25.8. And this is what the Lord says to Moses. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And then it goes on in Leviticus 26, 11. I will put my tabernacle in your midst and my soul shall not loathe you. See, being in the presence of God, him being and us being unclean and unworthy, there has to be some separation. But he still chose to be with us along our journey so that we could discover him and feel him and witness him and be part of him and turn to him in faith and trust. But there was going to be a journey and a path for us to be with him eventually for all eternity. 
it's just crazy. It's such a crazy, crazy story. Now we're going to talk a little bit about tabernacle and what that means. Tabernacle is a very seldom used word in today's times, but it wasn't originally called a tabernacle. The Hebrew word for it is called Mishkan, and it means residence or dwelling place. And Yahweh, God himself, referred to it as the tent of meeting. In fact, it's comprised of, of two layers. There's a place that's called the holy place, and then there's in the inner, inner part called the most holy place. And that's where the sacrifices would be done on the altar uh, outside of the temple and brought in and presented to God. Remember, to be in God's presence requires a sacrifice. And at that time, they were using animals and different things to, to make sacrifices to God so he could bless them and instruct them. But those were only temporary. Those would never be enough to cover our sins fully and get us to God for eternity. That sacrifice is going to come through God through his son named Jesus. So along this journey, God had a plan to be with us. He built all of the things that you see, everything that you see, every creature, every single being, so that he could dwell with us in his place and that we could experience his love and belong to him. But we belong to him and he's our king and our ruler and he wants us to trust him. He wants us to be obedient to him and his teachings and what he has for us. We have free will. We have a choice to make whether we're going to do that. If you want to have the life that you were meant to have and enjoy the fullness of that life, you have to meet God with where he's at. Although he comes to you where you're at, but there's gonna be a surrender on your part where you're gonna have to sacrifice your will and your wants and your false gods and things that you think are important for what he knows and has for us and what he says is important. He has love for us, he has peace for us, he has kindness and gentleness and all good things. And we can meet him now at, this, at his place and his space. He made that possible through his son. You can actually have access to God and call on him to meet with you today and feel his presence on you and feel his blessings and his favor and his love and be reassured that he has an eternity set out for you. He has a place that he's already made for us ahead of time. Even while we're here, he's building up this place for us to exist and be with him for all eternity. But you have to turn to him. You have to acknowledge that we're sinners, that we've made mistakes, that we fall short and that we can't get there on our own, but we get there through his love and through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what I have for you to think about. I've got some scripture for you to read about and study more. I love you. I miss you. Peace out.